This video will be over the Algebra 2 Topic 2C. Describe and analyze the relationship between a function and its inverse, quadratic and square root, logarithmic and exponential, including the restrictions on domain, which will restrict its range. So each of these four pairs are inverses of each other. All you have to do on them is find the domain and range for each of them. Let's look at number four. It's a little bit out of the ordinary. Uh, this one will have a restricted domain, a range, because it would have restricted parameters for this quadratic, since the rest of the domain and range would be negative f of x instead. So the domain of f of x would be from 3 to infinity. Because if you had less than 3, it would no longer be a real answer. You'd have a negative sign the radical. We don't want that. The range would be from negative 1 to infinity. For these to be inverses of each other, you have to specify a restricted domain and range for this quadratic. To do that, all you do is flip the domain and range of the original function. So the domain for the inverse would be negative 1 infinity, and the range would be from 3 to infinity. On this page, the rest of the domains and ranges should be all real numbers because those are all odd degree equations, functions. It's even functions that will have these restrictions. Let's look at these. Find the inverse of each function. Then graph the function and its inverse. Let's look at number seven and 8. So number 7 we have g of x equals parentheses x plus 2 to the fifth power minus 3. Well let's go ahead and graph this. So negative 2, 1, 2, 3. It'll look kind of like this if you were to put it in the calculator. Okay so let's go ahead and find the inverse. So we'll say that x equals y plus 2 to the fifth power minus 3. You just switch the x and the y, that's the first step here. Then you want to get y by itself, the new y, which was the old x. So we have x minus 3 equals parentheses y plus 2 to the fifth power. To get rid of this 5, we're going to take the we're going to exponentiate both sides by one fifth. Those cancel. So you have uh, x minus 3 to the one fifth power equals y plus 2. Subtract 2 from each side. Uh, one fifth power is the same thing as the fifth root. So we have the fifth root of x minus 3 minus 2. And then we have y by itself. We could just call that g inverse. And then we could graph that as well. So we have 3, 2, and then <coughs> and then it should be uh, symmetric with this line. I'll go ahead and graph it with Desmos to have a, a clear line here. Okay, here's what the graph should look like here. Notice that it is symmetrical with the line y equals x. For all inverses, they should be symmetric with this line.
All right, let's look at this one. We have f of x equals 1 over x plus 3 plus 2. We will find the inverse of this one, so we're going to switch the x and the y and solve for the new y, which was the old x. We only, we, the main reason why we do that is so we don't have to rewrite f of x, f inverse, and all that stuff. So we're going to subtract 2 from each side. x minus 2 equals 4 over uh, y plus 3. Uh, let's get the reciprocal of each side. So exponentiate by negative 1. So they have 1 over x minus 2 equals y plus 3 over 4. To get rid of the 4, we're going to multiply each side by 4. That's 1. So we have 4 over x minus 2 equals y plus 3. Subtract 3. And so your inverse would be 4 over x minus 2 minus 3. Uh, a trick to these is notice that we started with a plus 3 on the inside and now we have a minus 3 on the outside. We start with a plus 2 on the outside and we ended up with a minus 2 on the inside. So insides become outsides, outsides become insides. Pluses become minuses, minuses become pluses. Same thing with this one. Plus 2 inside, minus 2 outside, minus 3 outside, uh, plus 3 inside. It's also a way to check yourself. Alright, so let's go ahead and graph these two equations. We'll do the inverse in red, or we'll do the original in red and the inverse in blue. And it should be symmetric with the line y equals x. And here's your graph. Go ahead and try the rest of these problems for this page on your own, and then check the key to this packet to check your work. Before you turn in your packet, take a few moments to do your Unit 5 reflection. Summarize what you learned from this topic. What questions do you still have? How are you studying in class? How are you studying outside class? What are some new study techniques that you may have not tried yet? Remember, from before the front page, you should be studying between 9 to 14 hours outside of class each week to be proficient. Now, you may not be the average student, though you may need more or less hours than this. Did you study in outside of class for 10 or more hours, though? If you're not very successful right now, See how you can increase those hours, or become more efficient working on those hours. If you're doing well, how are you going to maintain that? What are your goals for the next unit? And how could the next unit better be better? How, how, what would you like to see changed, or added, or taken away from the, for the next unit? Write that here.